Hey Josh, uh, this is a pretty loaded question that a lot of people are asking, so I decided to do a video to help you out uh, and give you the best answer that I possibly can. So I put your question over here, uh, and basically you asked about silo structures for local search websites, um, and you gave the example here of this dentist. So you said uh, root site here, slash ser city services, uh, slash service name. So there's a couple of nuances here that, uh, that I wanna cover. So it depends on how many locations that a website has. So for example, um, let's go with a dentist again, right? So a dentist has, we'll call it six offerings, things like braces, Invisalign, uh, cleanings, um, you know, and three other off offerings that a normal dentist would have, just like a, a SEO ag or a marketing agents would have six different offerings, 10 different offerings, whatever it is, right? Those are the services. Um, and then you have the location to account for too. So if there's only one location, right? So if they only have a location, say in Miami, then what you'd wanna do uh, is you don't need to use a second folder for location, right? So for example here, uh, if they only had one location, you would not need to go with the city services here. It would just be um, teeth removal, right? So site.com slash teeth removal, right? And then you would use the root website here to drive that local relevancy, right? Because there's only one location, uh, but six different services. So you can go after each one of these here, teeth removal, Miami, um, Invisalign, Miami. You could hyper-localize these service pages now. If, let me just get rid of these, if, for example, um, they had multiple locations or they plan to scale to multiple locations, then you don't want to use that setup that I just said. So if they have a single location and only plan to have single location, you can just go with root site and then service pages, right? Teeth cleaning, cavity removal, whatever the hell they have, right? Um, but then you go into here about expanding the site into other countries uh, in a specified state, then you're going to want to set up those localized folder structures, right? So for example, you've got the root site just like you said, pardon my hand, handwriting here. Um, and then you want to go with location, right? So the locations uh, literally would be like <clears throat> um, Miami, MIA, Fort Lauderdale, <clears throat> get out of here, uh, NYC, et cetera, right? So you'd want to go with the localized folder second, and then the folders after this, um, each one of these would want to be the service. So this, be, this can become a lot of work. And this is where, um, you know, you really have to come have the conversation with the client because each one of these then subfolders would have to have each one of these six services that we spoke about, right? So uh, Miami would have six, Fort Lauderdale would have six, New York would have six. So each one of these then would be, so for example, if we were to do, let me just type this out. Oops. So for example, here would be site.com slash, let me make this bigger for you guys. Site.com slash Miami slash teeth cleaning, right? And then another one might be site.miami slash cavity removal, right? And then all six of these down. And then you'd wanna then duplicate these for every city that you're in. So for example, this would then become, you know, Fort Lauderdale, um, Fort Lauderdale, six of each of these, right? So hopefully, hopefully you get the picture on that, right? So the challenge here is that when you're working with a smaller client, uh, they're not like building all these pages out, you're gonna wanna have different designs for the location, and then uh, individual page templates for each of these services. And that can get pretty expensive when you're working with a small local client here. Um, on top of that, what you're gonna wanna do is each one of these pages here is gonna have to have unique content on it. So for example, what a lot of people will do that's a huge mistake is they will make this page the same as this page. So they'll just copy it and they'll spin out text. Um, I would not do that. Uh, because uh, you're just creating duplicate content and you're only spinning through text and that you're just creating low quality pages that aren't gonna rank really well. What you need to do is this one needs to have content A about teeth cleaning in Miami and then this one would be content B about teeth cleaning in Fort Lauderdale. So what you wanna do on these pages, right, I'm just gonna draw out what this individual page might look like. You'd have a uh, unique header for like Fort Lauderdale teeth cleaning. This one would be like Mi Miami teeth cleaning, uh, cavity removal, etc you know, maybe like a video or something up here in the header or a unique image that shows that office location. Then you're gonna have unique text about this location on the page. So like a blurb of like 250 words um, that talks about your teeth cleaning practice in Miami, your teeth cleaning practice in Fort Lauderdale. And yes, they can be similar, but you're gonna to wanna to rewrite them from the ground up. Just get a low cost writer to do it, it's not bad. Um, then you'd wanna have things like hours, uh, a map embed here. 
um, you know, of the actual Google Maps. Um, and then, you know, things specific like parking, each to each location, like office hours, um, things like that. And then with parking, you can get hyper nuanced here. You can be like, we're located next to the Wendy's off of I-95 for Fort Lauderdale. Um, and then for Miami, it could be like, you know, we're right off of, um, you know, Biscayne Boulevard next to the, the to the, Publix, whatever it may be, right? You, you, but you can see how you're adding in hyper-specific, hyper-local text that makes each one of these pages um, unique from each other, right? Uh, so again, the challenge there is that making sure that the client is gonna pay for you to create all these pages, get all this content written, and then on top of that too, each one of these pages, each one of these pages here, these root city pages should have a verified Google My Business listing. If they don't, so if they, that, it, like for example, dentists probably without a doubt are gonna have a physical location. But if you're doing this for a non-dental client, um, like a marketing agency, somebody who does not have, they might have like a PO box, um, they're not gonna be able to get a verified GMB Google My Business listing. If you can't get a Google My Business listing, then you can't go after these local markets. So that's really important. So if um, this dentist wants to go into a different country, city, state, you have to make sure that they have a physical verified address that's working. Um, uh, and then you're going to want to make sure you go through the proper processes to get those verified and then building out this unique content and then using the proper folder structure. Um, so that's that. Then you asked how best to rank two businesses in the same geo area. Is that a good idea? So I'm assuming here, um, by geo er area, you mean like zip code. So for example, within Miami, uh, you could hyper down, you could niche down into like Wynwood, you could niche down into, um, zip code. So the only time I would recommend that is twofold. Number one is only if you have one city location. So going back here, if Miami was your only location, um, then you could follow the same practice and go by neighborhood. But again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a verified list. Like if, if they don't have, if they only have one office in Miami, you don't wanna go about trying to rank um, you know, two service pages in the same area. It's just not a good look. And also Google's not gonna wanna rank you because if somebody's searching for like Wynwood, which is a, a specific area of Miami or downtown or Brickell or South Beach, which are all specific areas of Miami. If you don't have a physical location in those actual hyper local locations, Google's not gonna wanna rank you anyways and it can come off as a little spammy. It's also bad for the user. If you think about it, if you're searching for a dentist in your neighborhood, hyper local, hyper specific, and then you know you go to the website and you find out that it's actually 20 miles away in a different part of the city, you're gonna be pretty pissed off and you're actually gonna, um, you know, people aren't gonna wanna use you in the future if they decide to come back to that area, if they move, whatever. So you want to be very careful um, that you're going through the proper channels uh, of ranking these pages. It's not a good idea to just rank and bank pages in random cities because at the end of the day, it's not about rankings. It's about driving customers um, and increasing brand reach and awareness. And if you're doing that in a negative way, uh, it's only going to piss off the client. and It's going to probably end up canceling the contract for you. Um, so we'd be competing with each other if not careful. Um, two businesses in the same geo. So this also, I could, I could be reading this wrong. You could also be in two different businesses. If they're two different businesses, yeah, absolutely. If they're two different um, conversion elements, if they're two different types of businesses completely, absolutely. The more sites that you can rank in an area, the better. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's my advice on that. If you have any questions, uh, just drop it in the Slack channel and I'll get it to when I can. Thanks, man.